Greetings to all, welcome to the channel Simtech05. In previous video, we talked about the damage, evolution parameter and displacement at failure. These two governing parameters basically decide whether my element will be delete or not. Apart from those two parameters, let me check on the pointer. We have the fracture strain and boundary condition. Of course, fracture strain play very crucial role here and the boundary condition, there we have very simple funda for the boundary condition. Your applied load should be sufficient enough to generate a strain more than the fracture strain. Then only the element deletion will take place, otherwise it will be useless. Even you define the damage evolution parameter and displacement at failure and all those things, but if you not apply the sufficient load, it will not delete the element from the simulation, from the component. So I think uh, we not need to discuss much about the boundary condition. The important parameter is here fracture strain. Okay, let's see. Here we have a few example. This is the experimental case considered from one research paper. With the appropriate boundary conditions, we can say load. Generally, we apply the load as a displacement. And displacement should be sufficient enough to generate the fracture strain, that's enough. So, with the appropriate boundary condition and the fracture strain value, we can replicate such experimental behavior within our simulation. Here we can see the stress pattern generated within the component during the tension test. And after the damage, the naking, here you can see the naking, and then very similar kind of behavior predicted by the software on damage. Of course, there is some difference because uh, this component is actually plate type component and we consider here plane stress component. So, if you go with the 3D model, you will get better accuracy, better result. So, if you want to predict the necking effect properly, there we have geometry that we have to consider like instead of 2D model, instead of plane stress model, if I go for the 3D model with the appropriate thickness, that will give us the better accuracy of the result, especially the naking effect. And again, the fracture strain play the crucial role. We will talk about that. Okay, let me choose a pen here and with some color. Yeah, red. Okay, so here we can see this is my damage initiation point exactly at the plastic strain. Of course, the elastic and plastic strain will be meet somewhere here and then my damage will be start. So, after the plastic strain, what we have? We have the fracture strain. This is my fracture strain, not from this point. The fracture strain will be considered from the zero. From here to here, this is my fracture strain. Okay, let me clear one point before the... If you have the brittle material, what will happen in that case? It will go like that, means stress strain curve go like that and then the sudden failure will be occur, okay? And this will be like that, this will be like that, this will be my brittle case. But here we have the ductile case, let me raise these things. So, we need to define the plastic strain. Suppose my plastic strain is here 0 0.05. So, generally we have the material parameters from the experimentation or from the research article. But what people do for the practice purpose, they consider these parameters randomly. Suppose my plastic strain is 0 0.05 and I can say, okay, fracture strain is 0. 06 just after the plastic strain and what will happen this curve will be moved likewise this curve will be moved likewise see this is my elastic region sorry let me erase this see this is my elastic region then the plastic region will be start and then after that plastic region the fracture will be start and very quickly this fracture take place. And if you define the fracture strain value same as the plastic strain, 
very misleading behavior you will get likewise even your material is plastic but if you define the fracture strain randomly that will show you a misleading behavior likewise means element going to be delete some different way now in second case let assume you define the fracture strain with value 0.15 the 0.15 is the fracture strain exactly for the aluminum material and suppose this behavior will be likewise okay so this is my 0.15 for the second case and then how you will get the result you will get pretty accurate result pretty good result and if you want to see the simulation behavior of the both cases let me show you okay this is the case first and let me show you the behavior by simulating it okay so once load is sufficient enough to develop a strain more than the fracture strain the element deletion take place but how it take place it take place like a brittle material of course your material is not brittle material but the element deletion take place like a brittle material because your fracture strain is very close to the plastic strain and you will get such a, this type of behavior this is not a good result because it not match with any experimentation with the plastic material in second case say you have damage behavior same as above but the different fracture strain let me show you go to the simulation and see now you can see the element deletion take place very beautifully as compared to the previous one and this match with the experimentation quite beautifully now in the third case if you define more fracture strain it will show you the naking effect also of course the naking effect also should appear in this case in fracture strain of 0.15 but why it is not visible properly because we consider here the plane stress condition the plane stress condition means the component thickness is very less so if you don't have much material in the thickness direction it will obviously affect your naking effect naking behavior so if you want to see the proper naking behavior and you must go with the 3d component or simply i define this material more like a stretchable material after the plastic strain so that's why you are getting a better naking effect and here the fracture strain value is quite high it is around 0.4 and you can see how the element are going to be delete okay let go to the ppt again and as i told if you define the further the fracture strain likewise here you define the fracture strain of 0.4 of course for aluminum there is the false result this is the wrong value similarly this 0.06 this is also not right value so if you have the proper material condition proper material parameters you will get a better result but if you are going to define those parameter randomly you must take care of these fracture strain value do not define a value very close to the plastic strain if you define this will behave like a brittle material even your plastic strain is sufficient high but it will damage like a brittle if you define very high value of the fracture strain this will behave like a rubber type of material okay that's all for that